Hello, my name is Xander. Welcome back to Testing with Django and PyTest. A useful feature of PyTest parameterization allows us to define multiple sets of arguments and fixtures at the test function or class. Although PyTest enables test parameterization at several levels, in this tutorial, we just get started by working through an example of a test function that implements parameterization checking multiple input leads to the expected output. Take this example. You have a Django application or any application that requires a user login. We ask users to sign up, so we create a form that includes email, username, password one, and password two. So behind the scenes, we want the user to submit data, and then we want to validate that data. So we want to make sure that the email format is correct. We want to make sure that the email is unique, maybe against the database, because we only want one user with the same email address. We do the same thing with the username. And then in addition to that, also we want to check to make sure that the passwords are both equal. So we ask the user to type in the password twice and we check that the passwords match. So there's a, a lot of validation here that we might want to do behind the scenes with the user's data. So that will roll into potentially testing because we want to now test that validation to make sure it's working, for example. So we may build a test that checks the email format when the user's data is submitted the email is unique. We want to check to make sure that, or run a test to make sure that the username format is correctly being checked and then it's unique and so on. So potentially when we're creating tests here, there's a lot of copy and pasting. We might make multiple tests for each of these test cases. So utilizing PyTest parameterization, we can create multiple input leads and check against them. So this is going to be a lot easier to understand by providing a simple example. So head over to the link in the description of the video if you'd like to. Uh, you can download the previous tutorial. So we're going to work from that code in part three. So go ahead and download that. If you haven't seen this GitHub repository before, this is just an introduction to this series. Here you'll be able to find all the links to the different course tutorials. Uh, as well as some additional information which I'll keep adding to. All of the courses here are completely free. However, if you would like to donate, you can use the donate button here. That would take you to a PayPal page and you can go ahead and choose your donation amount. So once you've downloaded the repo for part three, if you're following the tutorial in this way, you'll find that you'll need to create a virtual environment. So here I'm in Windows, so Pi, I'm um, using the M flag, VMV, VMV. That's going to create a, a virtual environment folder there. So once you've done that, you just need to then go into and activate that like, like that, activate. So that's going to activate your virtual environment. So you should have a, a VMV indication here. And once you've done that, you can then go ahead and pip install minus R the requirements. So that's just going to get all the packages that are going to be needed to run this Django system. Okay, right, so once that's done, you'll be presented with this here. So let me just quickly take you through what we've done so far if you've missed part one, two, and three. So here we've got a setup where we have this main Django project here. Inside of here, we've got an app one. Inside of here, we have a model, and you can check out the model here. We're just, we have a category and a product. So a simple product and category type of setup. Right, so that's the, the app model. Now. What we also have here is a test folder. So we don't have tests inside of the app here. We're just working within this test folder for now uh, while we're doing these demonstrations. So we have a factories file here. This is um, the factories. Again, if you're not too sure what this is, just head back to previous tutorials where I take you through all these steps. So here's some factory. We're using factory boy. Uh, so we've created some factories connections to our, in this case, connecting to our product and category tables and that factory is then connected to our conf test file here so we've got this fixture for example here um, so we bring in the factories we register the factories and then here you can see that we're then utilizing this factory to create a new user and the parameters that we're using for that sorry not new user uh, for a new product so the parameters that we're using are right here so we're just creating these kind of static parameters here attributes um, that's how we're actually creating a new product 
So finally, we have the test. So an example for here, you can see that um, we, this test is being run. So assuming you have everything up and running, I can just now type in PyTest. That will run this single test here. You can see that it is passing. So this is an example to just showcase or set up parameterization with PyTest. It doesn't necessarily represent a real case scenario. Um, so let's just go back into the app one here and models. So here, for example, in your model, there's no doubt there's going to be some fields that are mandatory. So we have to type in things in order for that to be entered into the database. So potentially we might, to might want to create tests uh, to make sure that that is correct or that is working. So let's go back into our test here. So you can see that when I run this test, it's going to add all of these items here to the database. Now, for example, if I were just to um, comment out discount price, so when I make a new product now with this factory, it's not going to include the discount price. When I run this test, you can see that it fails because the model, our model here is expecting this as a mandatory field to be entered if you wanted to create an entry to the, the product um, table. So clearly we can't make a new product in our table unless we have this field set or defined. So it might be that we want to build a number of tests to check against all of these different conditions. So let's go ahead and set out a, a small framework for this. So first of all, we start with the parameterized mark. So next up, we're going to define all the fields that we have in our table. This is all the data fields. And at the end here, this validity check, which I'll explain shortly. So at this point, we just need to set up our data. So we might have multiple rows here that we want to test. So in this example here, we're going to first of all, insert this data into the database. Now this is what is expected. So in this case, this test is going to return assert true or false. So true being this data should go into the database. Um, safely. Whereas this, for example, we're missing, in this case, the regular price. Uh, so in this case, obviously, we're going to return false. But that's the general idea. So now let's go ahead and build our test function. So the test function must go straight after the uh, parameterize um, mark here. So now all we need to do is pass in the data. So this here we're going to be connecting to the database and here maybe we shouldn't be using the db mark if we should be using um sorry the mark here instead so either one this is just an example so we're going to bring in the product factory so that's the product factory right here so what we're doing essentially is we're just going to override these um, static attributes here that we're passing in to build a product we're just going to override those so this is the new data that we want to try and insert into a database. And we've obviously got two data points here, first and then the second we want to insert. Right, so now we've got this in place. Let's go ahead now and create or utilize the product factory. So now we're going to pass across uh, these parameters over to the product factory. So we just pass those in. Essentially, we're just building our data here. We're passing it into this function here and now we're going to utilize it in our product factory so we're going to pass it across to our product factory which is all obviously set up and uh, now we're just uh, going to run us a cert so this time we're going to use the validity here so you can see that this is the validity data that we're passing through so basically we want to add all that into a database and then test uh, this should test to be true so we're essentially just utilizing that here when we assert so just to show you that the second item or the second set of data will be tested here, um, I've added the product table. I brought that in. And here at the bottom here, you can see that we're going to run this test. We're going to add this data into the database. We're going to pass that over to our function. We're then going to pass it into our product factory. So this data is now going to be utilized in our product factory to create a new product. Right, so at that point, uh, we should have now, we're going to count the product table. There should be one item in there. So item is now going to equal one. So I'll run a simple assert. So one item equals validity. Now here we're using true. We're passing true in 
uh, to our function and we're going to then utilize that here so here essentially this data here is essentially the output of or the expected outcome sorry of running this data or adding this data into our product table so here then one count one equals validity true so one so our test should pass at this point so let's give that a go there we go so our test is passed so here just highlighting parameterization this allows us now to run multiple tests on different data points that we've created so now we can run a second test so this isn't going to work so let's just run something that is going to work so let's just add some different data here so we run the test again and you can see that one has failed because we've not changed that to true because we're expecting that to be true to pass and there we go so we now run two tests and you can now see that um, they've both passed so at this point clearly we've added two new items into the database well in actual fact what's happened here is if we run pytest with the report here oh apologies let's just um, add in a simple print here so let's remember the fact that when we run this it's going to create the database for the first item and then it's going to be removed then it's going to create the database again for the second item so we don't actually add two items into the database here so the database doesn't persist for each test these can be considered as individual tests here it just makes it easy for us utilizing parameterize here or parameterizing here with PyTest it just allows us to kind of set up uh, a matrix of, of tests here because we can test each function so what I mean by kind of a matrix of tests is that if I add lots here I could obviously go around my now matrix and just remove items from each part and obviously just test um, test my different data here um, utilizing this what now looks like a kind of a matrix so where this test this example test fails if I do make a fail here in actual fact um, this doesn't work like in this manner because what I'm returning won't be false uh, I'm going to be returning an exception I would need to deal with that exception differently so this was just uh, an example so if I just remove that here obviously this isn't going to work now because the, the table is expecting a regular price to be entered when we add a new product so let's just run this and you can see that the one the first item is added to the database but the second item will fail um, value must be a decimal number so we receive a, a validation error so the the point here is that it is an expected fail so we were expecting it to fail now we need to set up our test differently now to test uh, to assert that fail um, we're not going to do that in this example but i just wanted to give you a, a a view of utilizing parameterization here parameterizing in PyTest. now let me just show you a separate example where this might be useful where we could utilize this type of setup in this example here this code is available in the e-commerce project the Django e-commerce project part 10 you can see here that we're trying to add a new user so we're trying to create a new account the user needs to enter their username email password password two and you can see here we've set up this matrix of data that we want to check or to test so here for example this should be true if we try to enter this data now this doesn't have a second password so this should be a false should return false and so on so you can see that we're setting up this matrix of data and we're testing against all these different conditions here this test here requires or brings in a form so we're going to pass this data across to the form and essentially what we're doing is we're just checking to make sure that this data will be validated against the form and it will then be able to actually submit that data and create a new user so much of the validation here in this form you can see that there's lots of different validation checks here uh, cleaning the database uh, raising validation errors if there's issues so maybe the username already exists the passwords don't match and so on so there's a number of different um, validation checks that are being made in the form there so here for example utilizing a form if the data cannot be inserted into the form 
typically um, when we do a form validation check, oh, apologies, when we do a form validation check, um, that would tr return true or false. So here, for example, in Django, we try this data against this form. Now, if we run a form validation check, which is a built-in validation check in Django, that's going to return true or false. So this data either can be inserted into the form or it can't. So that will return true or false. So therefore, we can test use, utilizing a cert, a true or false return. So here what's happening is, for example, we're trying, first of all, this data, trying to insert it into this form here. Uh, so we send across that to our form. And then what we do then is we run an assert. So we take this form here. We check if it's valid or not. If it is valid, it's true. If it's not valid, it's false. So we then bring in the validity check here, true, false. And we run that against um, the, the outcome of the form is valid check. Hopefully that, that makes sense. And it's going to be true or false. So just taking a look at a third example here. So this is a running a test here. So we're utilizing the client here to post data to a view. So we're, we're essentially testing the view here. So this is creating an account. So similar to what we've done here, here we're testing the registration form. So in this case, we're going to pass the data directly to the view. Now, again, so normally we fill in a form that gets passed across to a view. So here we're just essentially just connecting directly to the view, utilizing the URL link to the view. And here we're just passing across the data. So again, we are doing a similar type of test. Here we have our matrix of data that we want to check against. And this time we're checking against the HTTP status or the HTTP status codes that's returned from the view. Now, if data can be inserted into the database, typically we would return a 200 uh, status. So everything is okay. So what we can do here is we can set up our view that if data isn't inserted correctly, um, or if the data isn't valid, then we can return uh, a validation or sorry, HTTP status code. So let's just have a look at the view here for an example. So here, basically, we send our data to the this view here. We're going to send via a post. So we check that. Then we get the data and then we're going to do a, a validation check. So if the data isn't valid, then what's going to happen? The else is going to kick in here and it's going to return a HTTP response. And that's the status code of 400. So back to the test here again. So you can see that this data isn't valid because we've got different passwords, two different passwords here. So that's going to return a 400. So here I'm just utilizing um, parameterize, parameterizing here with PyTest to basically check to see if the data will be inserted um, utilizing a client post. So there we have some examples of parameterizing fixtures and functions, test functions uh, with PyTest. So I do apologize. Some of those examples weren't exactly concrete examples. And I will over time replace this tutorial with something a little bit more robust, but as just really sharing this knowledge um, with you or this idea of utilizing this feature in PyTest. Hopefully it was useful and valuable to you. Thank you very much for listening and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.